The future of Africa has become a beacon of hope, a proof of creation that will build a nation. Africa, a continent that has been undermined and disregarded, has finally awoken and its shields is by his mightiness. Wipe away your tears for your fears being replaced with hope. Time has come, the time is now. A new mindset and a new nation. New Africans to build a new Africa. In the midst of a global pandemic when the world thought Africa would be wiped out, Freedom shared hope with thousands of Ghanaians by providing them food with the simple understanding that a face mask alone wasn't going to sustain them in lockdown. It's not about the food, neither is it about the mask. It's about his unique understanding of the needs of the people and the culture of nations. When the rest of the world looked on in silence as Africans and black people were brutalized by Chinese during the global COVID crisis, freedom stood up for the human race. By far, one of the few voices that spoke out with a peaceful protest during the peak of the pandemic, demanding an apology for their actions. I stand here today on behalf of our nation, Ghana, on behalf of the race of the world, black people and Africans. But freedom is not simply a revolutionary leader giving hope to thousands and standing up for his people. He is also an industrialist and a nation builder. Now, let me introduce you to his empire of development and investments. He is not just an investor and a developer. He is the mastermind behind his craft. Everything from design to engineering, construction and architecture with partners all over the world from manufacturing to supplies to installations. Qualys Group is um, the mother company of Wonder World, Petronia, New Africa Construction, uh, Belfast, which is city and property management company. And then of course, the New Africa Foundation. I decided to build my own industry where Wonder World is the development company and then Petronia is the large scale development company. And then New Africa Construction is the construction company. Qualys Residence is one of the typical examples of how symbolic my buildings are. And when I first decided to come up with Qualys Residence is because one, I wanted to create the first service apartment that would compete with hotels on the market. That's one. And I wanted to also make sure that this is a building that I sort of mortalized my mother with because it was time for me to honor my mother. I also wanted the generation to see that why don't we invest on our parents when they are alive to honor them so they can appreciate it more so than when we wait for our parents to pass. My business is growing so fast because of maximization and number one it's by far one of my biggest maximization. I wanted a cubicle with 120 cantilevers. I also wanted to use the building to send a significant message that it's, you know, this is a building that in the daytime is white, then in the nighttime it becomes black. I wanted to maximize the use of that land to the point where you couldn't do it anymore. And so that's how come I managed to put 108 apartments on 1,500 square meters. It's never done in history. Number two will sustain the skyline that we've already changed. You know, it needs to be sustained. 
WWE is a very strong development, saying something to both men and women in terms of creation. I feel like, you know, for the first time I brought two buildings together with a bridge. I wanted to marry people who are working uh, into where they're living. So it's like a, a whole misused, but this time it's very well incorporated with residential and corporate and lifestyle. Graduators is one of uh, the development that is to my heart. I decided to house the first thousand graduates in Ghana. People are going to find a way to make sure that when they graduate from university, they don't move back to their mother's homes. He has a portfolio of endless developments. and the flagship development, the Ritz-Carlton, a 400-room hotel and apartment sitting in front of the beach, boasting of a novel marina, becoming a leading and must-see address in the West African region. Vineyard sits 30 apartments, and it serves as a hotel and a home. The Belfast Company, which partners with the likes of JW Marriott. Avenue Lincoln, a multi purpose establishment with the feel of home, work, and play. His development aim for Nigeria will situate a twin tower with a similar building in Los Angeles, a project he will be enacting with Floyd Mayweather. Now there's extravagant, and then there's extravagant. In Bel Air, there's a house owned by a man with an eye for the finer things in life. A successful businessman at home in Ghana, West Africa. I am the Prince of Africa, Freedom Jacob Caesar. When freedom touches a building, his Midas touch is self-evident and prevailing. He doesn't just develop and build, but his designs can draw heaven to earth. His signature project in LA even made the world's most luxurious homes in Selling Sunset, a world's leading Netflix production on the best homes on the planet. With his skills of human management, his social responsibilities, his national, commercial, and industrial developments, it is clear that his empire has infinite potential. The New Africa Foundation has a unique mandate to provide humanitarian relief and a transformative mentality to inspire humanity, especially black populations across the world through education and philanthropic initiatives. Freedom's concern about society and humanity is endless. In the wake of a rather touching act of love for humanity by a veteran during the COVID crisis, Freedom met and later donated a professionally fitted two bedroom home to 95 year old World War II veteran, Joseph Hammond, in an act of a progressive structure and long-term vision for veterans across the continent. New Africa Foundation, we have an agenda to help Africa and some of the issues that we have in Africa is tribalism, religion, culture. Maybe this guy and this guy coming together could become the next biggest partners for carpentry or for steel bending or anything, you know, to do with developments, but because of religion. Everybody is living in a particular community and one cannot cross the border. And so that's why we came together speaking to uh, Chief Imam, you know, the most peaceful people around the Muslim sector. We have a relationship with also bishops and all other people and trying to bridge that, you know, humanitarian gap that is missing within the African culture. 
You might think this is a lot for freedom. He is developing nations, taking care of societies and communities, redeeming mindsets, and on a divine agenda to build the new Africa. But this is just a fraction of his empire. I'm not perfect, but at least I've had the courage to give. I've had the courage to share. I've had the courage to let you be a part of my world. So I live for you, I work for you, I share my time with you and I share my knowledge, my wisdom with you. Now I'm sharing my wealth with you and I'm telling you, come, let's build it together. Let's build a new Africa. Let's build a new mindset. Let's change the future for the benefit of our children. You're developing Africa as a continent. Why have you decided to do that? Do you think Africans are still in some sort of colonization? Tell me more about your vision for the youth. You have a proclaimed alter ego. Why do you think there is a need for that? As the story unfolds, we will learn about Petronia, the new African industrial city, to spur the continent into an age of industrial revolution at a speed never seen before. It is the transformation of the old Africa through development, industrialization, and urbanization. And when we fall, we never give up. We go rise as an African dream. When we stay up, 